So you've inherited a house with your siblings and your parents' house is full of stuff and you don't know where to begin? Well, I'm gonna give you a couple steps to follow to keep things as easy as possible. Stick around. Hi, I'm Annie Baker, and I am actually standing at a client's house in the villages where they have inherited their parents' property. And it was full of personal belongings. There are three siblings, and they needed to know what to do first. Follow these steps, and it will help keep things a little more simplified and definitely more organized. Number one, get your siblings together to do a walk through the house and do an inventory of what is available, what's in the house. If you're all the siblings don't live locally, get on a Zoom, get on FaceTime, whatever it is, and just do a, a full inventory of the house. Try and go room by room, stick together. Uh, sometimes each sibling has their own idea of uh, one piece of memorabilia that they really want to keep from their parents. And let's just make sure everyone's on the same page. So by sticking together, if one of those items comes up you can talk about it and maybe right then it can be decided hey you love mom's you know one serving platter that someone wants the other siblings don't care How, great let's set that aside but let's say that serving platter is desired by a couple of you set it aside to negotiate later don't haggle don't get into it with each other then emotions will be running high just put it aside then you have a full list and full inventory of everything in the house. Be as you know, specific as you can. Number two, decide who gets what. Try and be fair, try and be reasonable. Let's just say, let's go back to the serving platter. It's kind of a silly little example, but let's just stick with it. Uh, let's say a couple of you do want it, but there's a couple other items both of you want to. Again, try and negotiate. Give up a little to get a little, you know, the drill. Uh, and if you really can't, make that happen, then the, usually the easiest thing to do is to sell the item and just divvy up the money. So if that is a worst case scenario, then maybe find a different solution. You know, maybe neither of you want it to leave the family. So maybe you could say, hey, you get it for two years and then I get it for two years, something like that. There are ways around just one person getting it or selling it. But sometimes when you say, well, then we just have to sell it, everyone puts the brakes on and says, oh, let's figure something else out. So negotiate how it can work. So that takes us to the next step. Get an, a liquidator or an appraiser to come through and value any of the high value items. And I'll be honest, sometimes there aren't very many items like that, but if you're not sure, better be safe than sorry and have someone come in and give you an idea, an antique deal or something like that. So you do have an idea before you, after the fact, realize, oh my gosh, brother Billy got a $2,000 painting. We had no idea. And I got this $5 painting and now you're not feeling like things were equal. So if there are anything in question of value, get an idea of what the actual value really is. I'll just take a quick little break here in the middle of all these steps. I'm at a client's up in the villages, a 55 and older community of San Jose. And I am in the middle of helping them get rid of all their parents' stuff. So there you go, bunch of things left behind so far, but we're helping them do it. Back to my tips to help you. Step number four. If you have a large extended family, reach out to aunts and uncles, cousins, nieces and nephews, and good friends of your parents. You'd be surprised. Sometimes a, your mom's best friend would love to have something of your mother's. So you have a list, you can send it to the family or you can bring the friends over, the family over, and they can pick out the items that they want. Number five, let's get things sold. So whether you choose to do an estate sale, maybe in person, you can do it yourself. You can hire companies that do estate sales. They can be a little pricey, but honestly, it's a lot of work. It is. You have to be there all weekend. You have to prep all the items that have to be sold. Um, I also know as companies that will do online estate sales that I like. I have another video about options like that. I also have an option for a woman that will come and help sell things individually. So during COVID, some neighborhoods don't allow for estate sales taking place. So she will actually come in 
and take pictures of everything, get the price list, agree, you know, make sure you guys agree with everything. And she can sell things on say Craigslist, you know, apps like OfferUp and Let Go and Nextdoor, that um, community app and things like that. And she's got really great resources to get things sold and emptied. And then if, you know, whatever's left, you can donate the rest and, I have people that can help donate things. We can work with, you know, shelters, dog shelters, women shelters, places that actually need some of these items. But there's always, you know, dropping things off at your local Goodwill. So there you have it. That's probably the easiest way to just sort of have a plan how to get rid of all the belongings, but be patient, be kind to each other. It is overwhelming and emotions run high. So remember that. And I'm always here to help. Please lean on me if you need anything. Until next time, have a great one.